Hi, I'm Eloise. Welcome to this lesson in investigating geometry. In this series, we will concentrate on geometric reasoning and proofs. In this lesson, we will go back in time to find out how geometry began and look at the types of geometry we use today. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to name and describe the three types of geometry commonly in use today. Joining us today, we have Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Where are you and what are you doing? Hi, everyone. I'm here in my dad's study trying to find out where maths comes from and who invented it. And what have you found? Not much yet, although I think I might need some help. Maybe I can help you. I have found a few things. Take a look at this. The world over, every civilization throughout history has measured the heavens, the earth, and achieved great feats of construction. And the mathematics used in those ancient times continues to be used today. Geometry. The earliest known use of geometry was for measuring land. So the word geometry comes from geo, meaning earth, and metri from the Greek word meaning measurement. In 3000 BC, the lands of Egypt and a part of Iraq, known then as Babylonia and Assyria, were flat and the large rivers flowing through these countries often flooded. This meant that after every flood, the people living on the river banks had to measure out the boundaries of their land. This made them experts in the geometry of flat surfaces very quickly. They learned how to create right angles, use right angled triangles, and they could calculate areas using simple multiplication. The ancient Egyptians went on to use their knowledge of geometry to put up huge buildings that still stand today. In those days, concrete had not been discovered. So they had to use their knowledge of geometry and their skills in stonework in order to build these huge buildings. They did this by using huge hand-cut blocks of rock and fitting them together like a puzzle. But it was their knowledge of triangles that led the Egyptians to develop a calculation for their most famous monument, the pyramid. Their measurements were so accurate that these monuments have lasted for over 4,000 years. And today, we accept the pyramids as being masterpieces of straight-line geometry. Wow, buildings that had lasted over 4,000 years and they didn't even use cement? That's pretty amazing. But have you thought about what was happening in the rest of the world at the same time? Say, somewhere like China? Well, let's have a look. During that same period, the Chinese also suffered from floods as the Yellow and Yangtze rivers often burst their banks. And their answer was either to build dams to hold the water or dig canals to let the water flow away. Then, by 1000 AD, the Chinese had developed new skills. They could build ships big enough to sail around the world, although they never sailed them that far. So, what maths do you reckon they used to build all these things? Geometry. You got it. Let's carry on and see what else was going on in the world then. If the Chinese had sailed across the Pacific Ocean to Central and South America, they would have come across the people of the Aztec and Mayan civilizations. Like the ancient Egyptians, they used geometry to build their own magnificent pyramids and temples. But from about 600 BC, Greek mathematicians went a step further. They started to write books to explain and prove mathematical theories. And many of these mathematical theories and proofs are still studied in schools around the world today. Galileo Galilei, an Italian astronomer and physicist who lived in the 17th century, saw maths as a tool and a language to describe the world. He wrote, the great book of nature lies ever open before our eyes. 
and the true philosophy is written in it. But we cannot read it unless we have first learned the language and the characters in which it is written. It is written in the mathematical language and the characters are triangles, circles and other geometric figures. Think about it! People have been using geometry from as far back as 5,000 years ago. Now that's amazing. And it's the same kind of geometry we learn in high school today. As long as humans have lived in communities, people have used maths to measure the land, construct religious buildings and altars, and calculate the positions of stars and planets. In fact, we still take our calendar and our measurements of time from the positions of the stars and planets. So wherever human communities have existed, they have developed a form of mathematics. Today in schools, we study three types of geometry. Euclidean, coordinate and transformation geometry. So let's start with Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry is named after the Greek mathematician Euclid. He became famous by putting together a set of 13 books called Elements. In this collection, Euclid recorded all the mathematical statements and proofs that the Greek mathematicians of his time had constructed. Then he arranged them into a formal system. His focus was on using logical thinking and deductive reasoning to make mathematical statements and then go on to prove them. He called statements that had been proved to be true theorems. But this isn't just history. Today, much of our school geometry comes from Euclid's books, The Elements, sometimes referred to as plain geometry. Euclidean geometry focuses on points, lines and shapes on flat surfaces or planes. It is not concerned with what happens when the surface curves. Today we know the world is not flat. But still people like builders, carpenters and surveyors, engineers, navigators and scientists use facts recorded in Euclid's elements to solve problems involving triangles, circles, quadrilaterals and other geometrical shapes. But Euclidean geometry can be used even if you don't work directly with shapes because Euclid's approach was based on logical reasoning. It can be used to solve any problem we come across. Let's have a look at this situation and see how Rafilwe uses reasoning to solve a problem. It looks like Rafilwe is having a problem. Oh, what's happened to my pen? Her first thought is to identify the problem. The whole thing's come apart. I can't write with this anymore, it's useless. Now, instead of just looking at the facts, she is showing her disappointment. How does she know the pen is useless? Let's see what happens when she tries again. But maybe it can be fixed. It won't screw together and the springs come out. Okay, now she's identifying the facts. Let's see if she goes on to the next step. But if I can find that spring and stick these two pieces together with glue, it should work again. Now she's identifying what tools she needs to solve the problem. The trouble is, I don't know how the spring goes in. I know, I lost Gerard. He can fix anything. But first, I've got to find that spring and get a hold of some glue. Do you see how she's working through her problem step by step? First, she identified and made sure she fully understood the problem by identifying the facts. Then she made a plan to solve it. After that, she worked out what tool she's going to need. In this case, the tools are the spring and glue. Now she needs to carry out her plan. Gerard. My pen's broken and I want it fixed. I've got all the pieces and I have glue, but 
I just can't figure out how to get the spring in place. Can you fix it for me? Let me have a go. Okay, now that the plan is being carried out, the final step is to check to see if it solved the problem. Were you able to fix it? Good as new. Can I try it? Wow, it's perfect. You're a star. Do you see how the problem was solved? No other school subject teaches us to approach a problem in this way. We take it step by step, using only facts that can be proved to be true. There are no opinions, no guesses, no luck, just plain logic. Euclidean geometry teaches us to use reason, a skill that is necessary if you want to be successful at anything in life. It seems a pretty easy skill to learn. It is. Many people use this skill every day without even realizing they are doing it. Let's have a look at another kind of geometry that is related to Euclidean geometry that you will use in school. It's called coordinate geometry. Isn't that um, analytical geometry? You're absolutely right. You might also know it as Cartesian geometry, but they are all names for the same thing. So let's find out a bit more about it. René Descartes, a French mathematician and philosopher, developed coordinate geometry in France in the 17th century. And as you probably already know, coordinate geometry is still used today. The name Cartesian is taken from the second part of Descartes' name. He combined algebra and Euclidean geometry by using numbers to locate and describe points and lines on the plane. By bringing numbers into geometry, we can make and prove mathematical statements using algebra. Finally, let's look at transformation geometry. Transformation geometry was only developed later in the 19th century. It also gives us a tool for proving geometry statements. Using transformation geometry, we take a shape and move it in different ways to create an image of itself in a new position. Then, from what we know of the original shape, we can work out things about the properties of the new shape. We call the movements we use for this shape translation, reflection and rotation. Euclidean Coordinate and transformation geometries can be used for several different purposes. But for these lessons, we'll be focusing on where these three types of geometry share a common purpose. We will start by making our own conjectures. A conjecture being a statement that has not yet been proved to be true. Then we'll take a closer look at some familiar shapes and make conjectures and generalizations about them. And after that, we'll practice proving or disproving these conjectures using Euclidean, coordinate and or transformation geometry. This series will challenge you to go beyond memorizing someone else's definitions and facts. It aims to help you develop your own body of geometry knowledge that you can prove to be true. So get ready to do your own investigations. Now, it's time for your task. Today you've had a brief introduction to the fascinating history of geometry around the world. Choose a country and research its history of geometry, going as far back in time as possible. Some fascinating civilizations you can study are the Mayans and Aztecs of Central and South America, India, China and Egypt. Use your research to identify a contribution that this country has made to our present understanding of geometry. So from Sharon and me, it's goodbye till next time. Bye-bye.